Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to day four of Webinar Week here with Team Beyond Pulse. Um, delighted today to be joined by a dear friend and mentor to many of us at, at Beyond Pulse and, a, and across the coaching community here in the US, Mr. John O'Sullivan. So, John, thank you as always for for the time that you're about to share with us and uh, for the, fitting us into to your schedule. And and obviously with me again is Mr. Mark Wilson, who is a co-founder of BP. So. Um, to all of you listening, thank you for, for spending your time with us this afternoon. Obviously, considering the circumstances, it's, it is really refreshing and energizing to see so many of you dedicated to extending your education and to self-improvement and, and to being ready to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be when we can finally get back onto the field. So um, thank you all. And, and John, welcome. Um, Johnny, you will need very little introduction to many, but um, for the few that perhaps are less familiar with who you are, um, why we obviously love every every conversation we get to have and are so grateful for, for your friendship and mentorship. Can you provide a little bit of, of an insight into uh, into you, your background, um, and to changing the game project? Yeah, sure. Well, guys, obviously, thanks for having me on. And it's always great to be here with, with both of you. And I, I would echo that. I always enjoy our conversations uh, so much. They're always enlightening and, and make me think. And uh, yeah, I mean, up until a couple of weeks ago, I was a guy who traveled around the world <laughs> teaching coaches and parents. Now, uh, though, that's not, you know, as uh, my friend Doug Lamoff said to me, it's not a great time to be into the in the uh, let's get together in a big room and share ideas business. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot more stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, changing the aim project. We provide a lot of online. Uh, blogs, we have Way of Champions podcast, um, online courses, a couple books now, and uh, just trying to get in front of people, helping them be better parents, better coaches um, across many sports. Uh, obviously, uh, my background as a coach and a player was in soccer or football, but uh, um, I would say more than half our work now is in other sports because we're talking about beyond the X's and O's of coaching and and things like that and working a lot on the grassroots level as well so um it's really uh you know it's it's a super fun journey and and now we're all being asked to sort of you know how can we how can we keep doing what we're doing and and also how as as coaches can we use this time that we have all of a sudden been given where yeah. maybe we can you know stop coaching and, and start practicing coaching. I mean, this is like a really interesting thing, right? Like, you know, we tell our players, if you're going to get better at something, well, what do you need to do? You need to go practice, right? And so if we're going to go practice, um, that means we do something and, and, and we evaluate it and we get feedback on it. Now, most of us, I, you know, say like, when's the last time you practiced coaching? <laughs> right? And then, oh, I coached last night. No, you coach, you didn't practice coaching. No one gave you feedback. You didn't evaluate it. You didn't think about what you did. And I think um, for all of us now in this space, we can actually practice coaching. What does that look like? Um, you know, or and, and improve our practice of coaching. And so how can we take advantage of this time and use those couple hours that we would spend every evening on the field? Um, doing something better so that when we go back out there we're, we're better at what we do because i think most of us are probably asking our players to get better in this moment yeah i would i would agree entirely and uh, i'm looking forward to probing and pushing you for some of the examples and places that people could go to uh to do just that so a nice segue into the start of the conversation um John, I've asked you this question before, but there may be people on the line who who never listened, haven't seen um, one of the, the conversations that I was so grateful for a, a few months ago now. Um, and it's one that I've asked every guest this week, just because at a time where, you know, there does need to be a, an uplift, um, I'm asking for, for the guests, for the people that have inspired them, the people who have you know, been sources of inspiration and education to them throughout their journeys. And obviously with, with the eclectic background that you have um, and the humble answer you gave is excluded the fact that you've got to work with some of, work with or learn from some of, you know, the country's most elite and you've been in, in settings where you've seen some of the very best do what they do. Um, so I'm, I'm intrigued here, all time, all star, five a side team of coaches, 
and the characteristic <laughs> and the characteristic um that that the, i that i've met personally or or just that i can like lasted, hope hope to I, be. I, what however you want to do it oh man that's that's hard you know because because uh, a lot of them I, I i don't i don't know i've never spoken to but i've admired from afar yeah. um and uh man that's a tough one uh you know i and and i do I, can I can I extend across across sports wherever you want to go, mate? Ed, yeah. Educators, practicing, non-practicing, teachers, soccer, non-soccer, you go. You know, I, I I was I just watched this documentary the other day. I was thinking of like, okay, let me call it not my five aside team, but who I'd love to invite to dinner. Yeah, yeah. Sit, sit six feet apart from right now. Um, you know, um, I just watched this documentary on uh, Pavarotti the Italian opera singer, fascinating guy, amazing documentary, highly recommended, even if you don't like opera, if you're fascinated with mastery of, of what it takes to become a master of your craft, and then also to give back once you have that, right? And just his generosity and his kindness and how he was inspired in the last two decades of his life to use his gift to give to others was so cool and he just seemed like the type of guy that you'd want to go to dinner with never mind the fact that he you know he liked to eat um but uh, I, I don't know so that has nothing to do with coaching but i'm always fascinated by people who are masters of their craft mm. and, and 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 what what does it take to get there right and and so uh th there's one that i'm sure many of your guests have not thrown out so i'm going to throw out Luciano Pavarotti, <laughs> um, you know, from from a coaching standpoint, I mean, love to have dinner with Pete Carroll, um, the Seahawks. I just think he's just a just relentless positivity, um, relentless, uh, you know, really knows who he is, what he's all about. Um, and and, you know, his book Win Forever is I think that's like mandatory reading right there. Um, just about how he came up with well, what what's what's it supposed to be all about, and how he evolved as a coach, and how he overcame you know failure. Um, Steve Kerr, just because I think he's really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, just I, I I think he he is just a a deep thinker, uh, a master of his craft. Someone who has been, you know, I, I think, you know, my my business partner Jerry always says he's like, he says I'm just a flute, and I and I get all this good information, and I take it all in, and I'm like the flute, and it comes out through me. And I think Steve Kerr is kind of one of those guys when you look at like who he's been influenced by, right? He's, you know, played for Phil Jackson, played for um, uh, Greg Popovich, you know, coached for Pop, you know obviously coaching now, played with Michael Jordan, played with Scottie Pippen, um, played with Tim Duncan, you know, like all these, these people have influenced him and it comes out through him. Um, so yeah, that's one. Um, a week ago, this, or two weeks ago, this name would not have been on my list. Um, but, uh, I, uh, you know, we just had on our podcast, Quinn Snyder, who is the Utah Jazz uh, head coach in the NBA. And Jerry's known Quinn a long time since he was a player at Duke. Um, I had never spoken to Quinn before, but talk about like a guy who is just, I mean, he's got a degree in philosophy, a law degree, an MBA, an MBA, Master of Business, and, right, you know, here he is coaching. Um, and a guy who pursued, you know, his coaching through great success and then sort of humiliation and failure and then learned to be a coach again, you know, traveled the world. He went and worked in Moscow for uh, CSKA Moscow to become a better coach, um, you know, to, and just just a fascinating, interesting guy, the, the type of guy that you'd want to spend time with. Um you know, just because I'm a Man United fan, obviously Alex Ferguson would have to be on that list. And <laughs> for me, um, of of just someone who I've admired from afar, and I think he's amazing. And then um, 
you know, I guess, I guess, you know, I, I, I'd add, I'd add, like, I, I really think um, Jurgen Klopp's a really interesting character right now. Like, I, I just like his sort of relentless positivity and, and, and what he, what he brings, what he brings to it, you know? Um, I, I mean, I invite, like, Diego uh, Simeone, but there'd probably be a fight at dinner. Yeah, I was going to so, say, that might, uh, might get a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Handbags so. thrown across the room. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Look, I, that's, it, it's always fascinating. And, and I think, um, obviously, we're, we're going we're gonna to go down a path here of um, some advice from, from you of the people that you've seen work and, and how it can facilitate some of the feelings and the characteristics that obviously you're suggesting some of these guys possess, uh, just kind of off the cuff. One thing that, that I would, I would add to, um, there's a huge demographic of people that will tune in and, and, and watch this in the future on, on demand. And I just had circled there some advice to young coaches. Um, you obviously mentioned that, that Quinn has traveled and, and harnessed a, a variety of different experiences that he's been able to bring back and share. Um, and that you, when you speak about Steve Kerr and you're saying that the people that he's been influenced by and the positions that he's put himself in to absorb a variety of experiences and insights, um, I would think that if we could just go on a quick segue to, to the advice that you would give for, for people who might be starting or forming their, their coaching paths, you know, would, would those things resonate deeply with you? Well, I just think uh, for sure, and and that the biggest thing is none of them are ever done learning, right? They're not yeah. done, right? Even though they're at the top of their sport right now, they're not like, okay, I'm here. And so I think this is like a really interesting thing between the the best of the best that I've gotten to talk to. They're also the most curious, and they're also the ones who ask the best questions, and they're also the ones who in every conversation, like I find myself saying, wait, wait, stop. Like I'm here to learn from you, not give advice to you. Right. And, and, and so I always, I always think that's like really interesting. Um, you know, every conversation I've ever had, uh, if any of the listeners have read uh, David Epstein's books, uh, range and the sports gene, David Epstein is like that guy, every time you have a conversation with you, he, he is like asking you questions that make you go so much deeper on what he was asking you questions about. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, he, he has this incredible gift of like making you curious. And, and I think that's what really people who are really, really good at their craft is, is, is there, they go into every conversation sort of like, you know, what can I give in this, but what can I get from this as well? And so I think as a coach, sometimes, you know, your, your ego gets in the way, right? And you're afraid to ask a question because um, I don't want to ask this question because it might come out sounding stupid, right? And so I'm saying like, you know, don't ask a question that you could have Googled the answer, <laughs> right? But ask a question that really the information's it really good for you. Um, <clears throat> relevant to that um sorry i'm rambling here but no, um, no. uh last night with our kids my wife and kids we watched uh, this movie finding forrester with uh sean connery it's a great it's, it's a 20 year old movie one of the ones that inspired me to become a writer years ago and um um you know it, in that movie there's this line where they say you know, like he asked this question about, well, why is my soup creamy or whatever? And then he asked another sort of kind of pointless question. And he's like, that's not exactly a soup question now, is it? And he goes to explain how like a soup question is something that um, you're asking a question that you're going to get information from that's really going to help you grow and do better uh, versus like, uh, hey, Tom, where'd you get your hair done? You know, and, 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 <laughs> and so, and so I, I like that. Like, I think as a young coach, ask soup questions, right? Ask yeah. a lot of soup questions. There's no bad soup questions, but, but there's nothing worse than asking a question of like, well, if you actually read what I gave you, uh, you'd already have the answer to that. John, do you think there's, a, there's an element of, of self-awareness and self-reflection that precedes asking key questions? 
Yeah, Mark. I mean, of, of course, like there, there has to be, right. I think, I think the first self-awareness is like, um, uh, you know, the, the first self-awareness is like, Hey, I, you know, I don't know it all. Right. <laughs> so let's start there. I, I don't know everything. I have something to learn. Um, the second bit of self-awareness is, um, that I'll never get to the end, right? This is always a journey. There is no destination here. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I think those are, you know, those are two big areas right there for sure. Um, and if we can, if we can be better at, at, at those, then, then yeah. But I mean, ha, you know, how, as I wrote in my book, like to be, be a better coach, you got to be a better you. And you can't be a better you unless you have some sort of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And no, could, that it could probably just following on from that, it could probably help you um, understand how you frame questions if you're working with children and teens much better if you start with those inward, inward facing questions. Um, it can be much more inspiring and meaningful towards how you then engage with your, your in the, the human beings ultimately that you spend time with on a soccer field. Yeah, and 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 plus again that's what you're asking your kids to do right you're asking them to um question themselves you know think about their what work what's working what's not work on the things that you're not good at and and you know words mean very little but actions are what people model right so when your players see you going on a journey when they see you bring a new practice you know it's something they haven't done before and they're like, oh, coach, that was a cool game. Like, can we do that again? That's a, you know, that, you know, that's a great moment to be like, yeah, you know, I've been, you know, studying this coach in Spain and I thought that was really cool. Um, it, you know, I, I gave my kids a talk about like why we did before, before we stopped practicing or right? what are the elements of a Rondo? What, what are we trying to teach and why do we play Rondos this way? Right. I'm like, you know, hey, I, I just heard this guy talk about it and I thought it was really interesting that I could share with you. Right. Versus like, you know, this I've done this for 24 years. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's fascinating. And it's a great segue. Obviously, John, we were speaking last night offline about, you know, topics of conversations that we feel are probably more the most pertinent right now, given the testing times that we're in. And, and we said, you know, I was first made made aware of the work that you did with um, changing the game project and the the importance of the interpersonal relationships that that you that you very eloquently and very deeply um, expressed throughout all the blogs, all the all the books, and and the value of those little moments and the relationships that we can we can build with our players. And as I sit here, we've obviously spoken a little bit about this unfortunate new normal being an opportunity for people to to practice coaching and, and to get better but i also sit and, and i and i wonder whether there are people who maybe wished that they had been more intentional about building relationships with the players that they're now not going to get the chance to see for who knows an, an indefinite amount of time or um and the importance in in these tough times of of having established you know strong strong relationships that that can overcome um i guess these these types of barriers that are now apparent in in very much our everyday lives so i'd I'd like to go john if if we could into a direction of um providing the coaches with some advice some guidance some examples of um the soft skills that they can practice that will help them build the relationships that that i think quite nicely help us change the game as we know it in terms of how we we coach our kids yeah for sure i think before that you know i i think big picture like if this is anything it, it's 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 got to drive home the fact that um leave on a positive note <laughs> right like leave on something good because uh, you know, from a, a personal standpoint, you know, I wrote this blog the other day, just sort of, uh, you know, I already miss watching my kids play. 
right? And and like my you know my my daughter's last game, they were winning like four or five zero, and so I'm like, oh, great chance to catch up on a couple phone calls, do some emails because this game is really, really exciting, and I'll get to see her play again next weekend. Not quite, right? <laughs> you know, or bad interaction with my my son about how he played or something like that. Um, I think about I think about the last practice that I ran where I had two kids had to leave early for a basketball practice and they had been leaving early a lot and I was just really kind of frustrated with them. Like, just go, just go, right? Whatever, I'll see you next week when basketball's done. Well, guess what? I haven't seen them. And so my last interaction with these 12 year olds was a moment of frustration where they're like, I coaches, this I'm letting coach down, right? right? And it's like, and it's like, holy cow, like, yes, these are extraordinary times. But it's this great reminder of like, you know, we can tell people the truth, we can be tough, we can be demanding, but, you know, can they, we make sure that they always leave knowing that we believe in them. Uh, and uh, I, I feel like that didn't happen <laughs> with those kids. And, you know, and, and now even if I send them a note, it's still not the same as like a good handshake and like, Hey, good stuff. Good luck in basketball. See you next week when you're done. Right. And so, yeah. you've obviously you've obviously mentioned a number of times, um, and you and Mark spoke about it at the convention and and in your book. You know that the power of rule of one moments and the awareness of maybe we don't as coaches have have a thorough awareness of. The impact that our words can have, or the impact that a specific conversation could have on the kill the, the children in our care. Could you could you extend what you're just saying there to to explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, so this concept rule of one, right? One one person, one moment, you know, one comment, one time can change someone's life forever. And as a coach, we have this incredible opportunity to be the person to make that comment, to make someone believe in themselves, make someone see something in themselves, to take them on this journey to a place they would never get before, or or the opposite, right? Like that negative comment feeds into their negative self-talk and becomes this downward spiral. And And so I think anyone who is on this call because they're a coach and care about their coaching now has these moments like who's the coach that changed your life who's the person that inspired you i you know share a convention that you know the teacher who told me i was a great writer and stop handing in crap papers right and it's like that's why i'm a writer that's why who i dedicated my books to and, and because they believed in me and i think I, like I, I think this is that's what rule of one is, right? That's that's what this is. Is like we we never know if this is the comment. We never know if this is the day where a kid is actually going to listen. Um, right. And and so to be so intentional about our words and about our actions, um, it, it's just one of the great responsibilities that we're given as a coach. And uh, it's hard. Um, it's not easy, but it's critical that we're just aware of that and it doesn't mean you have to be perfect right but just you know just be aware tidy up my friend how my friend lynn let me just say this like my friend lynn said this to me a couple years ago and i really thought she says you know and she's a hall of fame water polo coach and, and she said to me you know um now the first thing i do after practice is is in my mental checklist is what did i miss today Right. What did I miss? Like, what a great question to ask yourself after practice versus what did I get through? Like, what did I miss? Who's the player that I missed giving a compliment to? Who's the player that needed uplifting? Who's the player that did really well that I should have caught being good? Who's the player who is struggling that just needs a word of encouragement? It's a really interesting thought after practice. It's a, it's a phenomenal thought. And, and my question would be from all the people that you've seen work or the experiences that you've had as a as a practicing coach what advice would you give to help people who may if they're humble enough to admit it be be less intentional right like then they're not quite as intentional as they need to be so what process can you go through is it planning is it preparation is it you know what what can they do 
to make sure that you know their intentional the, the intentionality with which they operate is is higher and that they don't miss things like could you yeah i mean i think uh, one of the great ways to do that is just journaling right so as a player getting them to journal their practices and okay how did i feel today did i have energy did i feel strong was i focused um how you know how did i play what went well what needs work but as a coach as well right so here here's my session here's what we're doing today right um and and then and then like immediately afterwards when you get in the car okay how did it go were the activities appropriate did we accomplish what we wanted to do is there anyone i need to follow up with you know and and, and it's interesting i think i have it right here hold on one second right bad bad webinar form i'm ducking out but <laughs> um i thought i had this sitting here in my pile yeah there we go right so like you know, here's a, you know, like, he, you know, no one's going to be able to read it, this, hopefully, but like, you know, here's like notes from all my practices, right? And so this is what we did on this day, and here's some stuff, and then my review after, here's what we struggled to do. Uh, we struggled to recognize numbers down, we dribbled into bad situations, uh, good improvement on this thing, I uh, need to give a shout out to this kid. Um, for a ball he gave away and hustled back, right? Those are my notes that then I can also go back to when we struggle with it in the game and say, well, yeah, I covered it, but in my notes, you know what? We didn't do it very well. <laughs> so of course we can't defend corners, right? And, and so that's that like checking back in on like, um, well, yes, I covered it, but it wasn't clean. We need to come back to that, you know? And that's just kind of one of the ways that I do it. I'm not saying that's, perfect right uh but it, it's just something for me like i since i work with young coaches i i use session planning software and so my sessions are cleaner than what you just saw there what i hand to them but that's my reflections afterwards and and would you have in that practice uh, again just curious and and mark feel free to to jump in here as well in your opinion what should a trade-off be between interpersonal coaching points and coaching points or, or comments that allow relationships to build within a session and just X's and O's and generic team information? Like there's a there's a blend there that, that can help you obviously establish relationships, right? Like how intentional would you be about trying to connect with players? I, I mean, I think one of the... Um most fascinating sessions I ever saw run was Pep Guardiola. I, I got to see him coaching Bayern Munich. Um, they were uh, uh, here in Oregon for the All-Star game five, six years ago. Yeah. And they were on preseason. <clears throat> and and just watch the session. It's not magic practices, right? He's to the same access, the same activities that everyone on this call uh, does. But what was just the 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 intensity, right? The the planning, the movement from piece to piece, the organization, no downtime. Um, but every time there was a break, him and his assistant coaches, so he's got four or five out there, it's obviously a different thing. Um, they made individual connections, right? So we got a minute for water in this, they're playing like at the end, some sort of like eight V eight plus two game and all right, boom you know it's like a four minute game and then boom break and he'd like zip out there grab and he was like grabbing a lot of like the young you know the 17 18 year olds on the first team tour and 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 talking to them you know and it's just this intense one-on-one -on -one connection showing them something that they needed to improve in that game right and um you know his assistants are out doing other stuff and um you know, I mean, these are players like Lewandowski and I mean, Shakiri was there, Schweinsteiger, you know, like this was right after Germany won the World Cup. Right. Right. And 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 that one on one interaction that tells that player, I see you and this is one thing that I can see will improve you is huge. Now, in our world, right, I got 18 kids out there, 20 kids and sometimes myself. That's hard to do. But if I can do a couple of those. Right. And I can, you know, 
just be intentional about a little bit more of that and, and split those kids up. Yeah, I can get to everyone over the course of a week or so and give them something to work on, you know? Um, and one of the things I teach the younger coaches who work with me is, you know, I'll like I'll grab them. I'll be like, who needs a comment right now? Right. And so in the beginning, I'm like, hey, you were, you know, you played in college. You were a center back. Grab that kid. Right. What What's he doing wrong? Go teach him that. Right. You're you were a center midfielder. What's he doing wrong? Look at his body shape as he's showing for the ball. He's not half turned. Go teach him that. Right. And, and that little thing uh, of like, hey, I play the same position as you would like to help you out. Like those are things that stick with a kid because coach is coaching me. Right. I think I think we we make a lot of assumptions as coaches um, that we believe or we know what they want to hear or what they want to learn or what they're ready to learn. We spend a lot of time in our own head. Um, and I did this a lot as a young coach. I would design lesson plans and and think about coaching points and think about how I would deliver them. And they would be over elaborate at times and too long, too much information. We've, we've talked a lot about cognitive load theory this week, John, and working memory and long-term memory. And um, it, it really makes me think about that, that building trust through, through a genuine, sincere relationship with your players. And the questions to build those genuine, sincere relationships don't always and shouldn't always be focused on soccer. Um, I think it's on how how you approach your players when they're walking to the field. It's it's removing that element of um, uh, your own assumptions, your own biases, your own beliefs, and actually connecting with with what's right in front of you, the human beings that are in front of you, to guide you on what you need to be delivering to them. Yes, you need structure. Yes, you need a curriculum, but you also need to be very adaptable based on the needs and wants of a group of 18 individuals who might all have different learning and retaining mechanisms for all yeah, at different I mean, maturity levels and ages. So, um, I mean, think about our next practice that all of us get to run, whenever yeah. that is. Are you really going to do shadow play? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Get aside. Let's get a five-a-side tournament going, and let's just enjoy the fact that we're back playing together, right? Even though you missed out on all this stuff, even though you might have this big event to to do they're going to be so excited to be there again just yeah. just you know just take that day and make it a fun competitive day you know like i might even my warmer might even be handball <laughs> you know just something that they love to be like isn't it great that we get to come hang out here after you know and i think that's great and 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 cognitive load i mean you know, we have no idea, you know, what, what, what are kids thinking right now? Well, what's the stress level that they're feeling seeing, you know, their home, they're seeing their parents stressed out. Um, they're seeing their parents have all these conversations with their friends of what's going on in the world. They're, they're not immune to that. And so, you know, sport, hopefully when we get back out there will be this like big, big release you know, and, and, and how much, you know, it's funny, you talk about like working memory, like yesterday, again, I took my son fly fishing. So if you want like to test your working memory, learn how to fly fish, mm -hmm. right? Like this, this is how you cast and this is how you do this. And this is the drift and this is how you mend your line and all this sort of stuff. And he finally said, dad, just leave me alone. You know, <laughs> I'm like, okay, but it's windy and you're going to hook the back of your head. Right. <laughs> you know? And, and so it's like, I, you know, it's uh, it, it's funny. It was just like, uh, well, uh, I, I I needed to shut up and just teach him one thing and let him work on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look. I I think what you've alluded to is something that that we forget often as as practitioners, right? And it's it, why are they there? And maybe their reasons for being there are not the same as as what we expect their reasons for being there are. No matter what level, you know no matter what level of, of athlete you have in front of you, there, there is still going to be an inherent need as a child. And, you know, to not, to not impose adult needs on children is, is something that should be, we should all be very, very mindful of. John, I want to, again, as, as I scribble and, and, and I appreciate that, that maybe our knowledge of, of, of your work, um, 
is more broad than than some of the people to whom you, you might be new to but can you um can you touch upon a question that that a coach could ask that might really help them better understand the needs and wants of of the players in their care or how they can act to be the best coach possible for them uh yeah i lost you there for a bit can you hear me oh, yeah i've got you back yeah if okay i i heard your question i think uh okay and, and so what's a question that uh coach can ask is 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 simple right um how can i be a better coach for you right how can i be a better coach for you how can i help you better right and and list really listen to the answer um a, a lot of kids are shocked by that because they're none of their teachers have ever asked how can i be a better math teacher for you right and none of their coaches have ever asked that but it's amazing when you do that and they say you know i, I really like when you pull me aside and explain something to me um, or I, you know, I, I don't like, you know, if we're doing an activity, uh, I don't like being the one to demonstrate it because I'm not really sure what you mean. Um, so, so things like that, right. Uh, that, that I think are, are super important and that gives them some ownership of it as well, because when they, you know, when they say, um, hey, I want you to hold me accountable on the field if I'm struggling, then say, hey, that's what you asked for. So, you know, I, I think that's like the the essential question right there. Um, now, if you ask it to six-year-olds, not necessarily, but I certainly think eight, nine, ten, you can start asking that question. Yeah, perfect. Mark, are you good? I'll just good yeah no no i i think that's one of one of the key questions and it, it takes a level of vulnerability and humility as a coach to actually ask it and bring yourself to ask it to to any age group of players because you might not always like the response because it might challenge some of the things you're actually currently doing and you've got to be willing to accept that whether the kid's eight or nine years old or 16 or 18 years old you've got to be open-minded enough to to accept that the response you get yeah, and I mean, you can ask the same question to if you're working with, you know, kids like their parents, right? How can I be a better coach for your kid? But also, how can I be better for this group? Because I am managing this group of parents, right? So what do you need more for from me? And usually they'll just be like, you know, just communicate better. Just send us information ahead of time or as best as possible or things like that you know uh, i mean i think those are the type of things that um, most parents really appreciate um and and again that builds your connection and your trust with with them as well because your trust is not just about your ability or your knowledge of the game it's about connection and it's about being believable and it's about um you know admitting when you're wrong and so i think you know, being open to have that conversation is is an important part of coaching. And 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 now those parents have your back and they will reinforce the messages you're trying to get across as well. Yeah. And I and I think again for the benefit of everybody on the line, what, what we're trying to emphasize is the you're touching on the the psych social corner all the time, right? So we had Dan Abrahams, me and Mark were fortunate enough to speak to Dan and who I know you know very well. Um and it's just removing the bias that we typically have if if we refer to x's and o's as being technique and tactics and understanding that, that ultimately we've got people in front of us and and those people have got people that are ferrying them around to be there and the willingness to be open and and acknowledge their needs on a broader level is going to help again i i keep coming back to, to the concept of changing the game but it's going to help evolve those experiences from from something that they've pre previously perhaps never never had or expected their soccer experience or whatever sport experience to be to one where now they understand that their, their needs and wants are as a as a person not just a player at the center of the, the decisions and the actions that the coaches can perform so um yeah it's 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 always great to hear you speak about it um john i, I would like to move into recommendations for the now so how can people now capitalize even more in, you, you've you've triggered thoughts on on what we can do when we do get back out there 
um, and being intentional about about the actions and behaviors and relationship building. But but where can people go? Who could they listen to? What could they watch? What could they read up on that you think would be either empowering or supportive in their quest to kind of move towards this, um, you know, an approach where they, there are, they are more conscious of, of the interpersonal piece of, of how they work. Can I, can I start with that? Pick up every yeah. moment matters. <laughs> it, I'll be honest. It's one of, and, and for me, I, I, t I do read quite a lot, but for anybody mm -hmm. listening on there and we'll certainly get it out there after, after this webinar, John, I think it's it's been one of the most easy to read, but also easy to take action books that I've read in quite a while. So anybody on here, if you don't already have it, Every Moment Matters is is one of my my best reads probably of the last 12 to 18 months that I've actually been able to take action on what I've read. So I start there. Well, yeah. no, I would agree. <laughs> Kudos, man. Thank you for that. That was obviously the the point of writing the book, and I, you know, I. When I wrote the book, I also I, I ended up cutting out this story, but I think it was a really it was a good story, and it's because it was a secondhand story, and I couldn't get the guy to confirm it. But uh, I'll tell the story on here. Um, and this guy Rhett Larson, and he's a very well known strength and conditioning coach, and he um, got hired a decade ago or so to go work in China. And he's like, so I I got to China. And I looked at what they were doing with their athletes. And his first couple of teams were like table tennis and stuff like that. Very good. He goes, but these athletes had these horrendous injuries playing table tennis. And their strength and conditioning program was totally not appropriate. And it was injuring them. He goes, but I had this choice, right? Like I could come in and throw everything out. But inevitably, you're going to lose. Someone's going to lose. Someone's going to struggle. And if I throw everything out, they're going to blame me said so what i had to make this decision is what's the 10 percent? what's the 20 percent that i can change that is going that i know is hurting them and if i can change 10 percent, right i know they will stop getting hurt they'll feel better about stuff and then they'll come back and be like that, that's been really helpful what else do you have what else do you have um and, and then i could layer in more and more and more and and so, you know, now, you know, in 2016, Rhett worked with the Chinese women's Olympic volleyball team. They won the gold medal. And now he's like, I can do whatever I want. Right. But but before then, I had to find 10 percent. And so I kind of put that in the intro of the book of like, this is not a book of throw out everything you do. But I think this is a really interesting moment of time for our coaches right now to find your 10 percent. What's something that you can layer in that you can change? Um, and and I, you know, for most of us, it's not a lack of X's and O's. It's not a lack of having enough sessions to run. It's probably on connection. It's probably on incorporating, like Dan Abraham's talk about, how do I incorporate the psychosocial piece into my practices? How do I inspire kids to work on their own? Um, these are the things that you can layer in. And so I kind of wrote this book of sort of like, hey, here's all these areas that might be something that you can find 10%, you know, work on one. And when that becomes comfortable, then add something else, you know? I mean, just like, you know, using beyond pulse bands, it's like, you know, you, you can't throw that in at the same time as you're doing a whole new curriculum and methodology and, new language of coaching you, you it becomes unauthentic right but you can put that in and keep coaching like you were and then learn from that tool of say oh you know what i need to be quicker in my coaching points because look at their heart rate go down now i can add something else and so um i think there's lots of things uh you know to add i i think from a reading standpoint um you know but it could be books on leadership, right? So what's good books on leadership that you, you can go? It, it could be a coach from a different sport. I already mentioned Pete Carroll's Win Forever as a fantastic book. Tons of stuff by John Wooden, fantastic uh, stuff. Inside Out Coaching, Joe Ehrman, great book on that. Um, I liked Above the Line by Urban Meyer, American football coach. I thought that was a really good book that I've read recently. 
um, resources. I mean, obviously our way of champions podcast has tons of these people, the talent equation, Stuart Armstrong out of the UK is doing great work, uh, with that. Um, Trevor Reagan, uh, the learner lab podcast. He's just recording season two. Now it's 10 episodes. They're 30 minutes each. I listened to them all five times. It was that good. The learner lab. And it, it's so good. Trevor's amazing. Uh, he did a great job with it. Some great interviews. Um, and like, I, I think that, you know, this is it. I geek out on sports science. So real science of sport, Ross Tucker's really good. Um, you know, I mean, the, these are all, you know, these are all things and, and, and like everyone and their brother right now is like releasing, you know, training videos and stuff for people to do at home. So you could go down that wormhole pretty fast right now too, I think of, uh, you know, how, how you get better. I mean, we're Jerry and I, um, are actually launching the first Tuesday of April. We're going to do like a five week, uh, coaching mentorship program where we're going to just kind of teach for five straight weeks with a group of people on leadership, culture building, mindfulness, visualization, things like that. So some of the stuff that we teach at Way of Champions, we're like, let's kind of take it virtual for now. And we're going to work out of his book, Win the Day and My and Every Moment Matters. And, you know, we're just going to give people this opportunity to, um, you know, get together once a week with a topic and a homework assignment and another topic for, you know, a couple weeks on, you know, getting better. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, again, I, I think, I hope listeners, as, as you've heard, you know, John just reel off the, the depth of knowledge and experience that you have to share is, is phenomenal. And um, my, my hope and the admiration that I have is that, that, that you're an example and embodiment of, of, a, of a continual learner, but somebody who, who can bring bring experiences and examples from, from different sports together. So um, as we as we start to round out to the to the young coaches, to the old coaches, give me some give me some key characteristics that you would encourage um, you would encourage them to to display, whether it's, hey, I'm listening to this and and now I, I want to kind of hit the reset button and start again. Like if if that unaware of the value of certain characteristics, what, what do you think would be the most empowering and, and impactful for them to, to try to, to develop and add to their, their repertoire of coaching kind of moving forward? Well, I, I, would, I would say that, you know, Mark talked about in the beginning, this is self-awareness. So can you do, can you have some self-awareness of, you know, of yourself, but if not, right, you know, if you work with the type of, or the age of players where, you know, you could ask them, you know, or, you know, do you have some parents that you trust? Cause you're working with 11 year olds and say, Hey, I'd like some feedback. Like, what does your son come home? What does your daughter come home saying about practice? And what are some of the things that you think I could get better on? I mean, I mean, you start asking those questions and showing that kind of vulnerability you know, sometimes what do they call it in, in business, like a 360 review, right? So you're asking your coaching director, your fellow coaches, the kids that you coach and their parents, how can I get better? You know, what, what, what do I do well? What needs work? Um, you might get some insight that you never come up with on your own <laughs> um, that you never thought was important and, and maybe it was really important. And so maybe this is a great opportunity to do that. And as a parent, right, of kids who play sports and I coach one of my kids and not the other right now, like if the coach said, you know what, I'm using this opportunity to get better. Uh, what are some of the things that you, that your kids think I could improve on? And, and from your outside perspective as a parent, um, then great, right? And, and obviously some people's advice is gonna be totally off and wrong and they don't know what they're talking about. Um, we all have them on our teams, but I bet you someone in there, someone on your team's a CEO, <laughs> someone on your team is, uh, you know, has, uh, works in HR, understands people. Someone's a teacher. Um, 
bet you might get some really interesting advice. And I'm just winging this, so I might actually take my own advice when we're done here. <laughs> it's interesting, John. When we, um, I referenced the book yesterday that Barack Obama referenced in his um, inauguration, Team of Rivals. Team of Rivals, yeah. Yeah, and it, it was about, I think it's Abraham Lincoln building a, a cabinet of, of people who he'd actually come up against, disagreed with, um, had open debates with, contrasting opinions, but he saw a value in, in, in each one of those individuals that he thought would make him um, have a stronger presence. And um, it's when we go looking for feedback, sometimes we tend to look for it in a very comfortable space. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'd, I'd urge, and you touched on it, Tom, about being get it get comfortable being uncomfortable i'll be honest the biggest growth and or largest moments of, of growth and development i've ever had is when i've been extremely uncomfortable and it's a, it's a chaotic messy phase you go through um but if you're open-minded enough and you want to challenge yourself i didn't go to people that will genuinely tell you the truth not not give you empathy but tough empathy tell you what you need to hear rather than what you want to hear yeah um, i mean you shared that in baltimore doing your yeah. UEFA license of like, this is like the hardest thing I've done, yeah. but like it's it's been amazing because mm -hmm. of your growth and expansion as a coach, it's yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. um, John, just just to, to close, as I, I'm appreciative of the fact that we're, we're, we're rounding up to, uh, to an hour of your time, obviously in the, the testing circumstances that we're in, whether it's as a, as a coach, whether it's as a parent of, of children who are who are coached in a youth organization um are there any kind of closing thoughts or calls to action for people in the next you know the next few weeks just to to kind of help the the, the players in their care kind of muster through this is there anything that you would recommend yeah i mean you know i've been thinking about this a, a lot recently from a perspective as a coach and then obviously people are coming to me asking that question um, I'm actually doing a Facebook live on it tomorrow just because I was like, you know, like I, I keep getting the same question. Um, and, and so I think again, you know, first of all, who's in, I'll pop uh, in the chat now. What, what's a fantastic it? question. I think it's 9 a.m. Uh, oh, let me look it up. Uh, I think it's 9 a.m. Uh, uh, West Coast time. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's the wrong week. Uh, but let me get that right because yeah, I'd love people to join. Yeah, 9 a.m. West Coast time. Just talking about right, how how can we help our athletes in this time? And I think so. Number one, who's in front of me, right? Um, number two, you know, giving them some suggestions of what they can go do in this time, right? I've been putting together like, you know, some video links of you know, some ball mastery. I, I found one of a guy just, you know, you know, this is from my own players, right? Hitting a ball against the wall, you know, so what can I, what, what are some different activities I can do with a, me and a wall, right? What are just me and a ball? Um, and then I, you know, found a Diego Maradona highlight dribbling reel. I'm like, okay, here you go. Like, just watch this, watch this guy's skill, watch his vision, you know, um, things like that. You know, so I want to inspire them to get better. I know lots of people out there are doing little contests and and using stuff. I know you guys work closely with U.S. Club Soccer, and I think they're doing like a national, you know, Tapia competition or something like that right now. Right? Is that it? Is that called Tapia? Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I think things like that are are, are great. You know, I'm gonna ask my kids like, all right, best sort of like, you know juggling skill or like those people where they're like you know doing skills where they're chipping balls in garbage cans or something right who can who can do this and video it and send it to me um you, you know best one gets a they got a signed portland timbers ball like here you go <laughs> All right who wants to win that and was everyone going to do it no but like a couple of them to do it because again we could be back in a month or we could be back in four right no idea right what 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 that's going what that what that looks like and so i think that's it and then just understanding the you know being empathetic of like you know it's got to be hard to be a kid right now away from your friends my you know how many people right or, or parents going i never thought i'd hear my kids say i miss school 
<laughs> you know, they miss school, they miss their friends. Um, yeah. So, no, very it's wise words to close with. So, um, John, on behalf of everybody, again, Team BP and, and everybody listening now or um, on the on demand function, again, thank you so much for, for sharing your Thursday with us. Um, for people who perhaps are, are less knowledgeable of, of where they can find you, obviously you've, you've mentioned um, the Way of Champions podcast, but but how else can people track you down and, and get more of your your information? Just changingthegameproject.com is the mothership, and you'll find right in the main menu, podcast link, blog link, um, links to books, online courses. Um, you'll find info on this uh, little coach mentorship thing that Jerry and I are starting. But I think the easiest thing is like jump on there. If it's your first time on the website, you can jump on our email list and subscribe, tick that box, and then you'll get all the information when, when that comes out. And uh, take the coaching journey plunge with us uh, right now, because I think a lot of us in this space are trying to figure out how can we help the people um, get better in, in this moment. and. Uh, it's, uh, it's interesting times for sure. So yeah, change no. the game project.com or way of champions podcast on all the Spotify and iTunes and all that is uh, the best way. And yeah, lots of time now to dive back into past issues, past episodes, past episodes. Absolutely. And look, I, I think again, it, it, we knew it would be um, coming in, but I, I'm sure that the people on the line of, I've loved this and uh, are going away with, with pages full of notes as always when, when you speak and you can share your experiences. So um, from all of us, John, thank you ever so much. Uh, Willow, thank you as always. For people on the line, um, we close out tomorrow, uh, the start or the end of webinar week. So we look forward to, to having you with us there. Um, we should be speaking to Matt Danaher at, at Soccer Pulse. Um, and then we'll obviously be rolling content into to next week where we'll launch hopefully some uh, educational opportunities for, for players and, and maybe parents too in there as well so and more coaching stuff of course but John um, from all of us thank you ever so much and uh, for everybody joining thank you again for, for taking the time out of your day to be with us thanks guys thanks guys see ya thank you thanks